What's going on guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, today we're actually going to be back working on Tony Stock. We're going to be doing some electrical work. Uh, so come along while I show you what we're going to be doing, what we're going to be adding and why. Alright, so here on the table in front of me I have what I believe is what I'm going to need to install this auxiliary fuse box into my truck. So starting over here, of course we're going to need some tools to take out uh, where we're going to be mounting it in the truck. I'm actually going to be mounting it to the secondary uh, battery tray in this truck because the Silverado is designed to have two batteries. So this one, since it doesn't have the second battery, I'm going to use that second battery tray. Uh, obviously some wire cutters, the crimpers to crimp the cable ends onto our cables, uh, some regular wire strippers, and then of course some wire loom to make sure everything stays nice and clean. And then this is some four gauge wire that I got off Amazon from Spartan Wire. Uh, it was highly reviewed and made in America, so definitely picked that one up. Uh, I got some extra scrap wire. Well, it's not scrap. It is good wire, but I just had kind of laid this laying around for our ground side. Obviously, our fuse box, and then this really awesome kit from TKDMR. Uh, this is a kit of cable ends and heat shrink tube to go around it so that we can make sure that this install is very clean and precise, and there's no chance of any arcing or fraying. Or corrosion getting into our harness. So with that being said, let's go ahead and tear into the truck and get this fuse box mounted. So we already got the battery tray removed and I think I've located the best way that we're going to be able to mount this specific fuse box to the battery tray. Uh, keep in mind, if you guys purchase a different fuse box, obviously you will have to mount it possibly different than I'm doing. But if you get one of these Blue Sea Systems fuse boxes, uh, this, would, this is probably going to be the best way that I would recommend that you guys install it. So let me show you. So the battery tray, as you can see, is raised. So I'm going to mount it to these three. Uh, this one I don't think is going to hurt not being mounted anything. Once we have three in there, it should hold pretty good. Uh, to me, this feels the best way of just the quick and easy, do it ourselves, and super simple. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those holes and get, get them drilled. I was able to find some hardware in, in our garage stock upstairs. Um, so, But if you don't have an excess of hardware, I would definitely recommend going out to your local Home Depot or parts store and picking up some screws that will fit.
So as you can see, we got the insulation cut off of there, and we have the cable end that we have picked. Uh, it's the right size for both our cable and for where we're bolting it onto the truck. Um, I did cut it back a little bit further than I like, but it's going to be okay because I'm going to seal it in this, and then I'm also going to pull the uh, wire loom over and seal it with another one so it'll be nice and covered. I did want to go over this really awesome tool that I found on Amazon, though. This is a multi-size crimper. So let's see here. I believe you to use this, you open it up, you push, and then you can rotate to whatever wire gauge you have. This is a four. So, and there you go. And now we're ready to crimp. So we're gonna go ahead and crimp this on. We'll slide our first piece of heat shrink over, shrink it down, and then we'll do our second. And then I'll go ahead and show you where we're gonna mount it on the truck. And then we're gonna do the last one actually once I double check the wire length. Um, it just goes with that old adage of measure twice, cut once, so. Just like that, we're now double sealed. Um, so that way the wire loom isn't gonna move off of the wire or fall off or anything like that. So, so now we can go ahead and start routing this into the truck. I'm gonna show you the really clean way that I've looked at on, on these 2014 and 2016 Silverados of where to run this wire. So it'll almost look factory. It's gonna be pretty nice. So let me show you that right now. So as far as routing it through the truck, we're actually going to be going off of our positive battery terminal here. I'm gonna run it along here. And if you guys can see, there is a wire loom that runs all the way across the truck and it drops down over there. Well, we're gonna go that way around the fuse box. How we're gonna get to our auxiliary fuse box that's now mounted over there. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and roughly put it here. I don't wanna, I don't wanna connect it. Always be sure that when you're working with electrical, you don't connect it to power until it's like the last thing you do because you just don't want anything to be sparking or anything like that while you're moving around. So I'm gonna set it up to where it's about to be or where it should be located. And we're gonna run it and secure it along all of these tabs and use some zip ties and zip tie it to this loom and get it fed over there. And then we'll all go ahead and crimp on this end. Once we're all done with uh, the wiring of the fuse box, we're gonna go ahead and double check it with our digital multimeter just to verify that we have the correct power and ground that we should be seeing. guys so we got the fuse box wired with our positive side uh, right now I was messing with the negative side cable and I did get my one end crimped on um, didn't really film it because it's the same as filming or it's the same as crimping on for the positive side uh, I was looking for a good place to ground it to unfortunately I cannot reach that ground strap right there that does go from the body to the engine block however I did find, if you see right here, I'm going through a hole that was already in the battery tray. And from there, we are going to ground it through this bumper uh, support bracket. There's two here. We are gonna ground it to this one. It should work just fine for what we're doing for the off-road lights. And even though I do have plans later on to 
change out this front bumper. Um, it should work just fine though, because uh, I can use even easily, I can easily leave this ground in here, regardless of if we decide to change the bumper or not later on. So uh, right now I already took the bolt out. I need to crimp on a bigger eyelet end for the center of the battery cable. And then I also need to clean the threads on the bolt just to make sure we get good ground. And then we're gonna go ahead and reinstall that. And then we'll go ahead and check for power. Technical difficulties, I think my other camera died, but I was wrong, it doesn't go here. This screw, you can't take off. It's one of those uh, anti-tamper things. You can loosen it, but you can't take it off. I took the cover off right here and I did find there is an open lug. Don't know if that's every truck, but my truck has an open lug. So that's what we're wired to. And we have good ground and good power at our fuse box. So I guess it's time to put this back on. Well, put the cover on, put that on. And then I guess that does it for us. Alright guys, so that's going to wrap up this video. I know that was sort of an abrupt ending there. Uh, as you can see in the footage right before this clip, I did show you guys that we do have good power and ground to our fuse block. And that will now allow us to just make a lot simpler, um, I think just a lot simpler and more refined wiring job for the off-road lights that I plan on putting on the truck or any really any auxiliary lights that I plan and you could also take the knowledge that I've shown you guys and apply it to your car truck or SUV to add any type of lights or aftermarket electrical accessories that you guys want to add so with that being said guys thanks for watching hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed my content leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any uh, advice or constructive criticism um, I'm by no means a professional YouTuber yet but you never know that could be something cool to do so if there's anything i can do to make the videos uh even better or even more information that you guys would like leave a question below and i'll be sure to hit you back so till next time guys thanks for tuning in to fountain fox garage and have a good one